So, hey guys. Welcome, we're just getting to the Fusion Center. So, we're just, uh, they're just getting rolling out here right now. We're walking up on the action. Let people know we're live.
name is Eric Huerta. I'm an undocumented immigrant and I have a suspicious activity report only because I was filming a personal video project. Police saw me filming a federal building. I was doing my own thing and then down the street they just pulled me over, start harassing me. Start, they start strong arming me and if I don't cooperate with them, guess what? They're going to take me into county, right? So I gave them my info and for all I know, my, my suspicious activity report is here. It's in another city. It's another town. Probably could be in another country. I don't know where it's at. And because I'm undocumented, I don't know what that means for my future. And let's say I'm trying to fix my papers later on and this comes up. They're not going to give me citizenship. I'm not going to be a legal resident. I don't know what that's going to mean. So I want to know where my suspicious activity report is. I didn't do anything wrong. I wasn't planning any attack. I wasn't doing anything. I was just doing a video project. So for the police to put me in this database, to have me listed, to have me uh, listed as a, a flight concern, uh, it's, it's unjust, it's unfair, and I'm here with everybody today fighting back to tell the police, tell the LAPD, tell the government to stop spying us, to tell, put out these reports, and to stop uh, these injustices on our communities right away. Thank you. There are estimated 85 fusion centers throughout the United States. This is one of its one of five that's in California. This is the biggest one we have right here. And this is the main one we're going to have to focus on shutting down. And our next speaker, Jamie Garcia, who's the RN nurse, that's going to come up here and tell you a little bit more information about this. Now, when the nurse come up here and speak out, they'll let you know that there's some sick program going on, right? Come on up here and tell me let us know what's up. Thank you, Tyrell Dogon. So thank you everybody for coming out. This is really awesome. I'm glad we're here making a lot of noise. So I've been a member of the Stop LAPD Spying Coalition for about two years. I'm also a registered nurse in the Boyle Heights community. So we've listened to what a fusion center is. It's right there. It gathers information. We've heard about what a SARS is. And if everybody takes a look right in front of you, you'll see a rollout of SARS that ACLU had to go through a court battle to release. And if you notice, most of the personal information is redacted and people who these SARS are written on still don't know if they are in that file. So we've listened to explanations of all this. And I'd like to shed a little light on the ineffectiveness of these programs. On October 3rd, 2012, the United States Senate Subcommittee on Homeland Security released a highly critical report. And if you notice, the Department of Homeland Security has been following us around. So there's been a report about what people think, what the United States Senate thinks about these people. So the Senate report stated that almost $1.4 billion has been spent by the federal government on fusion centers. The subcommittee investigation found that fusion centers intelligence reporting was flawed irrelevant, useless, unrelated to terrorism, could have violated Privacy Act protection, lacked adequate financial oversight, and more. We also know through the Constitu uh, Constitution pro uh, Project report that 20 to 30 percent of funding for fusion centers comes from federal sources. It is likely that California taxpayers are unknowingly funding a wasteful and potentially illegal program. So your tax dollars are going to that building and going to filing out these reports on people. Yeah, right? Come on, guys. This is serious stuff going on. So when critical services are being cut back, we cannot afford to waste money on, politi on policies that represent a police state. Safety is a necessary reality that exists in everyone's life, but we cannot obtain that safety by ignoring systems that obtain public safety by instilling fear and suspicion into communities. This fusion center denies our community what it needs to thrive. We must build trust. We must provide resources for healing. We need more community centers, schools, health clinics, libraries and parks, and even more than that. Fusion centers must be defunded. They must be shut down and all SARS and secret files released. Guys, let's hear some noise! Let's go! Pero policía, más educación, más
know all too well what these wars on people look like. It was Richard Nixon right here out of LA that created the war on drugs, and we exported that nationally and now internationally. It was our local law enforcement building off of that that created the war on gangs. We've exported that nationally and internationally, including the use of helicopters against people, the use of battering rounds against people, the use of gang databases, gang injunctions, and gang enhancements. All of that coming from right here in LA County. Once more, in 1988, as we said, the LAPD created the SARS program, and we have exported that as well. There are now over 48 um, jurisdictions around the county, around the country that use this, including the District of Columbia. There's 14,200 local law enforcement departments that have the capacity to share their SARS with other departments, including federal FBI, um, federal ICE, federal Homeland Security departments. There's 53 federal agencies that participate in the national SAR initiatives. That gives you a sense of how much law enforcement is coordinating this together. There's 290,000 cops on the front lines that are trained um, in how to take SARS and enter that data in. And 800,000 line officers that have been trained in the SARS program generally. This is a huge, massive program. And as Jamie said, it's already been proven to be a huge waste of money. So where could that have money gone? Toward youth centers, toward housing, toward education, toward programs. We know that these programs don't just spy on people, but they rob our communities of essential services. Um, this right here in front of us on the sidewalk are just an example of a few of the SARS just for photography alone. Remember, these are very minor activities that everyone engages in. This person right here represents a Guatemalan tourist who was stopped because they were taking photos. Their entire information was taken and all of their photos were erased from their, from their camera. Um, there's, there's other examples of a professor that was stopped taking photos, of high school students that were stopped and detained and searched because they were taking photos. This is something that all of us that take photos, that take pictures, that observe communities, that draw buildings or draw trees, that this, this impacts us. Um, but of course, as we said, overwhelmingly it's African Americans and Latinos that are being surveyed and their, their information is being entered in. Um, once more, it's the people that are most isolated from services and resources in our communities and most likely to get fed into the, into the prison system that are being impacted by SARS. So we want to make that very clear. Um, the next person up is going to talk about just that fact, how young people are impacted already by surveillance in our communities. Her name is Carla Fuentes Quiroz.